Du Fu Huazhou. In the year 757, I left the capital through the Golden Light Gate and went by side roads to the court in exile at Feng Xiang. In the next year, I was sent from my post as a left reminder to a minor office in Huazhou. After bidding farewell to some old friends, I left again through the same gate and thought sadly of the earlier time. Back then, my duties took me through this gate, when the country to the west was thick with Tartars. Even now, my carriage has not returned. I fear my soul has been left behind. The court is now returning to the capital. Why have I been sent on this assignment? I have no talent and every day grow older. I halt my horse for one last look at the palace. So we continue with Du Fu's uh, pentasyllabic regulated poems. And this poem flows relatively naturally from the previous one. Uh, you will remember that I said there that Du Fu was working in the capital at the Chancery. As, as the, the introduction to this poem says, he was a uh, left reminder at the capital, which was um, one of the, uh, the... There were reminders of the left in the Chancellery and of the right in the Secretariat. So he was, uh, he was holding a relatively low position in the imperial administration, but it was a position that granted him access to the emperor. And it seems that he annoyed the emperor considerably, by being overzealous in making proposals and in presenting, in presenting memorials and petitions. Now, uh, another problem was that uh, uh, Du was a protege of sorts of uh, um, uh, an important member of the bureaucracy, uh, the Grand Marshal Fang, to whom he dedicates uh, a poem uh, that we will read in one, two, three, and four days' time. Now, this Grand Marshal Fang had been one of the um, privileged ministers serving Emperor Xuanzong. When Xuanzong abdicated, he went uh, to the new emperor's court at Fengxiang, and for a time he was given positions. But around the year 758, he was demoted. And as usually happened in, in Chinese ancient politics, when a minister was demoted, all his uh, clients and friends were demoted with him. So that's probably the real reason why uh, Du Fu was sent in the year 757 from his post in the capital, as a reminder, to the provinces. So, even though this is not clearly stated as such in the introduction to this poem, this transfer is a demotion. Yeah, this is a demotion from having a, an a relatively, not too important, but, you know, a position of contact with the emperor in the capital, to having a position or as a subordinate to the provincial magistrates in, in the province of Guajou. So there is a, a great fall. And uh, being as he was relatively old for that time and uh, quite sickly, Du Fu clearly despaired after being given this position of ever returning to the capital and of ever managing to influence the emperor and uh, to become a successful uh, scholar official. He loathed his work, which was mainly bureaucratic and clerical, at Huazhou, uh, lots of empty and useless paperwork, he resigned that position and he spent the last years of his life roaming around China without no official position, mostly in the West, in the area of Shu, he stopped for at least five years, and, uh, and then in the Yangtze River, where he would die. Now, one thing we haven't said about uh, Du Fu until now, by the way, uh, is that even though he is the ideal, the model of the scholar official who wants to serve, Du Fu had actually not passed the imperial examinations. Now, he, he, he tried it two times. Uh, the second time, you could say that he, that, that, that he had a justifiable failure because all the candidates were failed in that year, uh, allegedly because the, the prime minister didn't want any competition. Uh, the previous uh, uh, taking of the exam and failing is more difficult to justify. But, well, anyway, it's a, a paradoxical thing. He still managed uh, to have an official career because during the Tang, it was still possible to get a, a foothold in the bureaucracy without having passed the examinations. Under the next dynasty and following, it would be impossible. But uh, during the Tang, you could still, you know, uh, start through recommendation at a relatively minor post and climb up the ladder through, uh, 
through ability and uh, proximity to the emperor. Anyway, having said that, uh, all that is the background for this poem. What is this poem about? Well, the topic is, as quite usual in a lot of Chinese poems, merit unrecognized. Du Fu is basically complaining in this poem that he, who is a worthy and intelligent and able scholar official, has been demoted, uh, expelled from the imperial presence. Uh, he makes, you know, a point at emphasizing his loyalty and service to the dynasty in its time of direst need. In fact, the first uh, two couplets of the poem talk about that, about how he traveled, how he ran away from the occupied capital with great personal peril, how he reached uh, the other, the capital in exile of the emperor, and how he returned to the capital. And now that he returns, it seems that he is not going to be rewarded for his bravery and daring. Uh, rather, he is demoted to a minor position. And so... Merit scorned is, you know, the topic of this poem. And as I said, you can divide it into two parts. The first two couplets talk about uh, talk about uh, his service in the past, and the last two talk about, you know, there are rhetorical question: Why am I sent to this place? And I'm growing old and useless. I look with uh, sadness, with melancholy, perhaps with a little bit of anger, at the imperial palace that has ejected me, and I leave the capital through the same door through which one I left to serve the court. Uh, curiously, in the introduction, the note to this poem is almost longer than the poem itself. And as usual, it grounds, Lee, it grounds uh, this poem, uh, Tu Fu's poem, in his personal life and experience. Which, this is one of the trademarks, you could say, of Du Fu's poems. That is, uh, the mixing, the intermingling uh, of personal grief and personal biography with national grief and national Biography. So here, while telling of his demotion to a minor post in the provinces, he is also highlighting the chaotic uh, situation that the country had just lived, the feats of service, loyalty and heroism of some people, and so on. So, quite an interesting poem, quite an interesting poem. So... Uh, let's clarify a few things about the introduction. So it says, uh, in the year 757, he left the capital through the Golden Light Gate. Um, that gate was in the west of, of the city. It was the main gate in the west. There were three gates. It makes sense that he went out through the Golden Light Gate because the, the, the imperial court in exile was in Fengxiang, which was to the northwest of the capital. He went by side roads to the court in exile. He couldn't go by the main road because the territory of the heartland was controlled by uh, the rebel soldiers. So in the next year, he was sent to a minor office of Huazhou, very minor, not even as a district defender or as a, or not, as a magistrate. No, he was a commissioner for education or something like that. After bidding farewell to some old friends, he, le he leaves through the same gate. This is a bit weird, because his posting in Huazhou was in the other direction. It was to the east of Chang'an. But, you know, perhaps he had lots of friends in the western suburbs of the capital, and he went there to make the parting party before leaving, or just for nostalgic reasons he wanted to cross, to leave the city through the same gate that he had left before. Okay, let's go as usual, couplet by couplet. Back then, my duties took me through this gate, when the country to the west was thick with Tartars. So back then, at the time that the capital was occupied, in 757, his duty, his sense of duty and of serving the emperor, took him through this gate towards uh, the imperial capital in exile. He says, when the country to the west was thick with Tartars, this is a bit confusing, the country to the west was where the imperial troops were. In fact, the, the barbarians, which weren't exactly Tartars, a lot of them were, were Chinese, although it included, the, the rebel army included a lot of barbarian forces. Um, they were to the east, not to the west. Uh, I think the original says something like west suburbs. So perhaps what is implied is that uh, just outside the capital, where, just outside the gate that Dufu is, escaping, the enemy troops are still there, so it's a dangerous crossing. Next couplet. Even now, my courage has not returned. I fear my soul has been left behind. So that experience was, in Du Fu's own words, his attempt to reach the court in exile with very great danger on his own life was a scarring one, and he became 
it affected him. Well, perhaps he's overemphasizing his suffering and uh, his heroism here, you know, to, 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 to compensate, to show off and say, look, even though I did this, I am still scorned by the court. But we have no reason not to believe that he was exposing himself to very great danger and that, you know, he, he, he would have suffered from the terrible fear he experienced then for all his life. You know, it's pretty believable. Yeah. As about the soul, just a curious fact, the Chinese believed in uh, that a person had different souls, at least two, the Hun and the Po, and they believed in exorcist uh, rituals that could bring the soul back. So perhaps Du Fu has only lost some of his souls, not all of them. Next couplet. Uh, the court is now returning to the capital. Why have I been sent on this assignment? Actually, at the time of writing this poem, the court has is not just returning, it has already returned. And, and Du Fu spent some time in the capital as a left reminder. Uh, the previous poem that we read was written at that precise time. So, so this feels a bit like a rhetorical question. But anyway, he's saying, so brief a time, it wasn't that much, really, one year. So brief a time since the court has returned and I am sent to this lowly, vile posting. So um, the poem could continue or could have emphasized the complaint or the, you know, the, the reproaches to the emperor or to whoever was responsible for sending him in exile. But, you know, the last couplet, the poem ends on a note, as quite usual in Du Fu's poems, of self-deprecation and humility and resignation in the face of, of, of despair and disaster. I have no talent and every day grow older. I halt my horse for one last look at the palace. So the poet uh, leaves. He, he is aware, and you know, that, that, that line saying that he is old clearly mm, lets the message through that he is going to have no more opportunities of serving at the capital in a position of power or prestige. He is destined now forever either to lowly positions in the provinces or to no position at all. And uh, he accepts it with melancholy, gazing with resignation, perhaps with some anger, but anyway, gazing for the last time at the imperial palace, which he quite rightly knew would never see again in his lifetime. He would never return to the capital after his posting in Huazhou, at least not, not for serving in office or for any significant period of time, and he would be a perpetual wanderer until the end of his days.